greater financial intelligence to simply survive. Welcome back to the Sandra Page Things. My name is Sandra, if you haven't been here before. So in all fairness, you probably clicked on this for a particular reason. My thoughts on Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Oh, this book is a bestseller. I mean, I feel like everyone's read it already, but if you haven't, I'm gonna be sharing you guys the things that I learned and why you should read this book quite frankly, as soon as you possibly can. So I'm gonna share the logistics of the book. So like how many pages, how many chapters, stuff like that, whether I thought it was an easy read or a hard read, how long it took me to read it, and then we'll talk about my favorite quote. So it's actually 243 pages of actual content. It's nine chapters plus the final thoughts portion and the introduction. I'll actually go ahead and give you guys an overview of what they're called. So chapter one, lesson one, the rich don't work for money. Chapter two, lesson two, why teach financial literacy. Chapter three, lesson three, mind your own business. Chapter four, lesson four, the history of taxes and the power of corporations. Chapter five, lesson five, the rich invent money. Chapter six, lesson six, work to learn, don't work for money. Chapter seven, overcoming obstacles. Chapter eight, getting started. And chapter nine, still want more, here are some to-dos. Just a quick overview of what the book talks about. This book, I actually had started reading a long time ago. And I, it's one of those things, it did not take me a long time to read because I didn't like it. It was because I did and I wanted to absorb the lessons. But I realized like, I can just go back and reread it if I need to. You know, it's not doing me any good just like trying to take time to read it it would be better to read it more than once if I really need that kind of time. You know, I went ahead and I finished it and once I started reading it again, it took me like two or three days. It's not a long read at all, especially if you are in the financial situation where you wanna figure out how to have a good cash flow instead and stop living the way 99% people live with their money. So, that being said, let's go ahead and get into some favorite quotes. Okay, here we go. All right, so I'm gonna share one quote that particularly relates to my already existing philosophy. Um, and this says, in my life, whenever I have felt needy or short of money or short of help, I simply went out or found in my heart what I wanted and decided to give it first. And when I gave, it always came back. And I wrote, this is exactly how I operate my YouTube and my social media. Um, and essentially, if I want to grow, I help others grow. And that is through like genuine comments and watch time and likes and stuff like that. Given it will be given unto you. So if you want something, then the best way to get that is to give what you want to someone else who you know wants that. It's what's in your head that determines what's in your hands. So another quote, action always beats inaction. I don't wanna give away all the good stuff in here, which is absolutely impossible unless I sat here and read the entire thing to you. Oh, I love this quote too. God does not need to receive, but humans need to give. And that's just a thought on like tithing or giving. The power of self-discipline. It talks about paying yourself first and the power of self-discipline. That's a big deal and something that I'm working on myself right now. And then I also wrote the general idea to work for value instead of working for money. To me, that means like working to give something meaningful to someone else rather than just to get. Your mind is so powerful that you become what you put in your head. This one is an interesting quote, and I want you guys to comment and let me know what you think of this. Guilt is worse than greed for guilt robs the body of its soul. And I totally agree with that second half. I just don't know how I feel about, is it worse than greed? Or is greed worse than guilt? I don't know, but I see what they're saying. I just don't know. <laughs> However, I've definitely been feeling the guilt robs the body of its soul part. This is gonna be the last one. The better you are at communicating, negotiating, and handling your fear of rejection, the easier life is. Truth. 
And that's gonna be my last coat for this one, except for the one I'm gonna share at the end. But that's my overview on this. It has a lot of practical, real life wisdom that, I mean, it applies to money, of course, but it applies to other areas of your life too. I think that this book is obviously valuable for teaching you how to think the way that rich people do instead of um, the way the vast majority of us do, but it also teaches you how to have the mindset of a person who has high character and values, and I love this book for that. That is my very quick overview. It's what you do not know that is your greatest risk. So find out what you don't know by reading this book. And I will go ahead and I will link it in the description box so you guys can get it really easily. It'll be available from Amazon right down there in the description. So be sure you check it out if you have not already. All right, on that note, I will talk to you guys later. I'm going to go. The next video coming out is my TBR, my To Be Read. I'll be talking all about the other financially focused books that I will be reading in February. And you don't want to miss it, so make sure you are subscribed. And I'll talk to you guys next time. That should come out on Monday or Tuesday. So I'll talk to you guys then. Bye.